Big one, Marker. Chair, I just want to ask you about the New York doll, to describe the New York doll's attitude. What was the group's attitude? Group's attitude. Well, I think as far as attitude, I think the group constantly um, cha was changing. Their attitude as individuals constantly changed. Uh, our attitude as a group, a rock and roll band, uh, which we all mostly and most of the time would just happen to agree with each other. That was part of the that was part of the mystique and part of our good luck and good fortune. We seem to agree a lot uh, about most important things. Well, they turned out to be important. The, and it was very rare that we disagreed. Everybody had a shot. Everybody was recognized. Uh, this is the beginning stages of the Dolls, to be our beginning works, our first album, even our second album. We were quite tight, and um, everyone really did have something to say, and usually everyone made room for them to say it. And because and, you were considered very kind of bratty, weren't you? You were kind of... I suppose we really were. We, we weren't many diff We weren't very much different than anyone else in our game. Our game of just simple things like hanging out and having a drink together or uh, having a, hanging out, talking about what we knew best. And that, that really made us comfortable music. To hear it was an, another whole trip. But to talk about it gave us inspiration. And little by little, uh, as the members started to come together, little by little, uh, it started taking an important role. And it was, it started to be a bit serious. That's not too much of our game. But we started to realize that there is a serious part. And, Somehow you got to try to uh, balance to find out where they are. Uh, what's serious? What isn't? Uh, when do you lay it on? When do you not lay it on? How thick do you lay it on? And how thin do you lay it on? When, where, and how you lay it on? What, uh, what, uh, what shocked people? What was outrageous about the New York Dolls? Jesus Christ, I'll tell you a lot. I mean, even before I was in the band, I felt something and I seen something that happened to have been a dream of mine. And uh, I can sit here and tell you now that my dream came true. Everything I wanted in a band, everything I wanted in music. Uh, of course, I wanted more involvement as I was the last musician to join. Under the circumstances I joined, it was not easy. Uh, some people ha were a little hesit hesitant about me. But then again, I did realize and I knew one thing, that nobody, nobody, nowhere could fit that group any better than I could. So I was comfortable with that. And what was that dream that they, they represented? Well, they represented a dream that I had of a combination of boys that could really bring back you see, you got to remember the period then, musically. Um, it it had a peak of boredom that was it just was so boring uh, that it peaked of boredom, and we knew it. We were way ahead of the game. We knew it long before anyone else recognized it. We it, we knew it was in our own backyard. Our um, contribution to the world is our culture of music. And I think we played an important role in that. Um, every, I think everybody else might have their own way of saying what that is, but I think it all comes out basically that we contributed a type and a style of music at a time where it was almost impossible to do. Everything was against us. Everything was against the type of music we played. Everything was against the way we looked. Everything was against uh, the, the, melodrama, the melodrama that everyone else made of it, where it was so 
simple to us, so simple, so laid out, so plain, that we we grasped it. Oh, uh, sorry. What, what were you doing that was different to what everyone else was doing then? Well, we were playing two, three-minute songs. We weren't playing ten-minute songs with a 15-minute guitar solo that meant nothing, that had no importance whatsoever to the public. Uh, you know, that type of stuff is extremely personal, like jazz, for instance. See, we knew what kind of a band we were. We also knew, without a doubt, that we were learning. But that wasn't important. We had a magic. I believe this very, very much, and I still do. We had that magic that people were looking for, including ourselves as individuals. We were looking for that. We were just lucky enough to somehow, through eye contact, just by the way we wore our clothes, we knew that was the right guy. That's the right guy. You know, we knew without words, we knew we belonged together. What about the image? What was the That was just so natural, it's pathetic. I mean... And how, how different was it? How different was your image to what else was going on? What made it so radical, so... Um, we weren't what you would call quite big people, physically. We, we, were, we looked younger than we were. We had the tendency, for fun, uh, act younger than we were. And style of clothing was strictly tongue-in-cheek, strictly camp. And the thing was, how it was hard for us to believe that people, most people, couldn't understand that simplicity. It always gets down to simplicity with me. It's an obvious, I mean, it was so obvious what we were doing, and they couldn't catch on. They couldn't see it go right by them. What about the word punk? Was the word punk being used? And the word punk has been used on and off, in and out, for a quite a few years, in fact, in America, mostly in New York. There were groups, even, I remember this group uh, that I can think of off the top of my head that called themselves Street Punk. And they were a run-in-the-mill band uh, of many. And the word punk is old hat to us. You see, there's, you, there's one thing about America and the English people. The Americans, and don't think, don't think this, I'm bragging or anything, the Americans have a very good way of inventing, creating a very natural, real product. Uh, but, now that's the American artist, but the American business will step and walk right over it. The American business don't know what they have in their own backyard. But the artists, the creators, they know. And it's so frustrating for them that it's so there to be touched. You could reach out and bring it right back. And the business of the, you know, like music business. Music business, it just does not make sense. That the words don't go together in any way. And the fact that these poor people in the record business in the music business, count on that, depend on that. They don't know what they're counting on. You know what it is? They'll milk something so dry to get the last penny that, that they waste time with the English. On the, contra on the other hand, they'll notice it so quick, so right, so fast, that they'll tongue-in-cheek camp on it and bring it to life. That's what we owe them. I mean, they owe us because we created it on the spot. But it, it, it came and went so fast that it took the English to experiment, to, to, to let it go, to let it grow. And what was it that the English were picking up on in the New York Dolls? Well, there's, there's a little scratchy area there, because you got to remember, they were very young, the Pistols, at the time of recognizing of what the dolls were doing, because we still were a group then. They were quite young, so we had a few years over them, and we had uh, a few years over them 
in, uh, well, music, uh, getting, getting better as musicians. So we were a little ahead of them in terms of uh, dues. We paid fucking dues, and we paid hard. I think we, played, we paid someone else's along the way, but we really paid it. And I personally really paid a lot because I was seven years older than the boys. I had already been in music way before the Stones and Beatles became famous. And when they did, I almost regretted it in a way because they weren't doing anything new. This was so old hat to me, it was pathetic. 